Dr. Mark Pellegrini. Good evening. Pleasure to be with you, Tom. You've got a whole lot of very suspicious looking, um, are they called Petri dishes, those little containers? They are indeed. They're bacterial dishes and we swabbed your office. Uh, swabbed my office. Now, now, can I say before we ask, well, I ask you what we found out, I share an office with our breakfast show co-host John Burns. John Burns is a lovely person, but he does like to leave a bit of a mess. He doesn't clean up after himself and he has a habit of eating bits of food and just spreading it all around the place. So chances are that if you have found something that shouldn't be there, it is Bernzo, not me. What did you find? That would explain a lot, Okay, but we're not going to make a scapegoat out of anyone, no. are we? No, yes, we are. Uh, we found lots of bugs, but some of them are the usual ones, like Staph aureus or Golden Staph. And golden strep. Staph? Yeah, some of that can but be that lying around. But people in hospitals. The resistant type can, but I, th I suppose that's uh, part of the discussion really is why some of these bugs, which are quite common in the environment, um, don't harm some people and hurt other people. Okay, so golden staff, what else? Um, so the other ones we found were strep, um, some fungi, um, also were uh, in, in the plates. Mushrooms. Uh, Mophilus, yep, what, type, what, types what, of mushrooms. What sort, like, like, um, like athlete's foot? Pterosporum was the one. It's quite mm. common on uh, on people's hands is the one we found. I, I used to go to a gym that didn't get cleaned very often and once out of a, a, a wooden doorway which had rotted because it came into contact with the water from the shower, some mushrooms actually grew out <laughs> of the wood. I mean, is that, is that sort of thing dangerous? Um, not the common mushrooms other than if you eat them, but mm. uh, there, there are sort of uh, fungi that are in the, the water if it's stagnant there in the bathroom. Okay, so, so golden staff, streptococci, is that what it is? Correct. Uh, a type of fungi, yeah, probably not that you would put in a pasta. What else? Uh, the other germs that we found were on the microphones, and some of those germs <laughs> sort of reside in your mouth, and uh, they're sort of things like uh, Haemophilus and Neisseria. So there's quite a few germs in and about the the environment, but they're now, all now, common. Would they, ones. would they be related to like Angus? So, for example, I mean, yeah, Neil Mitchell. I'll, I'll do my Neil. Why? <laughs> Why? And he gets like, you know, he gets very angry about. It. I get angry too sometimes. Would, would that? Would that? force the germs out of you? It, it probably would. I mean, these are germs that are in our saliva mm. um, and generally reside in our la in our mouths. So, no, yes. so I see that you've got, you've got about six inches between you and the microphone. That's obviously because you're <laughs> a specialist. A <laughs> so should I, should I avoid putting any part of my face in direct contact with this with this foam microphone thing here? No, and, and I suppose that's an important point. I mean, these are germs that we all carry. In fact, you know, germs completely outnumber the people of uh, the people on, on Earth. So mm. they're all over the place. And the reason why we're, we're healthy and stay healthy is because our immune systems protect us from these germs. Now, now on that, one of the things that I'm fascinated with is, is kids' allergies. You know, kids, uh, my daughter goes to a school and there's the usual list of things you can't bring in, you know, nuts and eggs and gluten. and I mean, the list of things that you can't bring in is longer than the list of things you can bring in. You know, a, a high proportion of kids are allergic to food and other things. Well, why is that? Because when I went to school, I, I don't remember people being allergic to a lot of stuff. How come we've seen this happen in the last 20 odd years? Yeah, it's a good question, Tom, and we don't have a, a definitive answer. And certainly for a, for a while now, there's been a germ theory around allergies in that, you know, people who come from areas where there's lots of germs, our immune system is otherwise occupied with protecting us from those germs. And so we're a bit dismissive about allergies or food allergies and and it's it's possible that in a much uh, cleaner environment our immune system looks to to fight something else so 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 what you're saying is that this rather dirty germy environment that we have in here at 3aw caused as i've mentioned primarily by neil mitchell and john burns <laughs> is actually strengthening my immune system so i should be grateful for my work environment quite possibly yes okay now did you find anything else about which i should be worried uh no they're, they're all the common germs that uh you'll find on many people the thing that we look for is predominantly bacteria but the thing we can't look for is uh, or find it very hard to look for are viruses and the mm. viruses are, are really pesky buggers but no no, no no pesky bugger viruses here though we didn't look for them but uh oh, well, in, case, quite... in case you found them <laughs> quite possibly yeah. now, uh, what, what about, can I ask you about bacterial wipes? Now, we have containers of them around the office. Again, my fellow co-hosts don't actually ever use them because they prefer dirt and muck rather than cleanliness. But 
I know in people's homes these days, you know, spraying everything with uh, various sprays and bacterial wipes to clean every surface. Is that a good or a bad thing? Well, we've certainly got uh, a lot of evidence in hospitals that uh, wipes and hand washes are very important in stopping germs crossing from doctors to patients and also across mm. patients. Their value in, in homes is, is probably more related to just trying to limit uh, um, parents passing on their, their uh, viruses to kids and, and vice versa. Uh, I've got a couple of kids and I can tell you I get, I get colds uh, probably every three weeks. Yes, I, I, I hear what you're saying. So in general, any place that has a lot of people moving in and out of it and using it, sitting on things, touching things, in our case, speaking into things, often in a rather exaggerated manner, um, you are going to get the spread of germs and so forth. Yes, you're certainly going to get those uh, bacteria on, on a whole lot of uh, surfaces and basically we live with them every day. Did you find anything here at 3AW which surprised you? No, they were all the common germs. Have you ever done this at another radio station? We haven't, so I can't compare you, <laughs> but I'm happy to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I mean, the, the Walter and Eliza Hall is, of course, um, uh, Walter and Eliza Hall Institute, I should say, celebrating 100 years of medical discoveries that have revolutionised scientific understanding. It's Australia's oldest medical research institute, and you can find about more about what they've done over the past 100 years at www.discovery.wehi w-e-h-i dot e-d-u dot a-u but of course dr pellegrini i mean we've only known about microbes and germs and things for a couple of hundred years back in the old days they thought of it as noxious vapors and bad, bad thoughts and witchcraft that made you sick didn't they yeah absolutely and i think it's all because of the discoveries that have been made over the centuries and also the discovery of antibiotics and antivirals and a whole lot of new therapies um we've revolutionized care for a lot of things but antibiotic resistance is becoming a problem so we still need uh, new discoveries new research well that was going to be my final question i mean you know when people say oh i've got a cold i'm going to go on antibiotics and your friendly local gp and pharmacist seems happy to prescribe them i mean should we should we avoid doing that yeah, I mean, you certainly don't want to point the finger at anyone, but yes, I mean, I think if someone's got uh, a common cold, they should not be on antibiotics unless there's a good reason, and that is that they've got uh, bacterial infection on top of their cold, because uh, the antibiotics we use are useless against the viruses. Dr. Mark Pellegrini, uh, Infectious Disease Specialist from the Walter and Eliza Hall Institute, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. Thanks, Tom. Thank